Hello crafty friends, I'm coming at you from my dining room instead of my studio today because I wanted to present to you these projects that I made for the Tim Holtz Sizzix Chapter 3 release. And because I made all of my projects fit the same theme, tea in the garden, I wanted to do the reveal of all my projects in my dining room so that I could use my grandmother's hand crocheted tablecloth and so that means a couple of things uh, one thing means that um, my cats are all over in the house and so you might hear them kind of playing around or uh, you know some different noises from them as they are just doing cat things so don't let that distract you and the second thing is the lighting's probably a little bit different but we're going to go ahead and give this a shot uh, because i just thought this would be a fun place to do this reveal now, when I saw the Sizzix Chapter 3 release, I was kind of looking over it and I thought, wow, so many um, of these things could fit with a tea theme. And so I decided to just run with it and make everything part of a tea theme. And I thought, you know what? I would love to have a tea in the garden. But I don't know if you're like me. I live in the city and I don't really have much of a garden. I have a little bit of a backyard, but not much of a garden and definitely not one big enough to have a tea in. But I can make my own garden and have a small intimate tea, maybe in my dining room or something like that. So let's get started. And maybe that's something that you can do too with some of the, not only the new releases, but also pairing the new releases with some older releases from chapter two of this year even from, oh gosh, the seasonal releases last year and some from previous uh, releases last year and the year before. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll talk through this. This really isn't going to be a technique type video. It's really just gonna be talking through the things because most of you will be able to make these without any instruction from me once I show you some of the details. Let's get started on the tags and since really the one that is the most involved. So this is just an etc tag, which is that heavy, heavy board, and it comes in the craft color. And what I did was I took some heavy, distress heavy uh, craft stock, and I cut the leafy twigs, if you can see that, the new leafy twigs background die. I cut that out three times, and I put one across the bottom. And if you look, you can see that it has a natural border, and it fits perfectly on this tag. But the problem is, is that you have to cut off the top border and then kind of match them a little bit. And so there's a little bit of maybe fussy cutting to get those to match. They don't match perfectly, but you can get it pretty close. And then once you cover it up with things, no one even can tell where those two were uh, meeting up. You can, if you look carefully, you can kind of see where I cut the borders and put them together. But really, again, unless you point it out, nobody's going to notice where you put those borders. So it took two and a half of the background of the uh, leafy uh, twigs background. And then the little bit that was left over, I went ahead and put on the reinforcer. Now, once that was done, uh, I attached it to the etc. tag with stress collage medium. First, I put it on the tag. I pressed my pieces in and then I went ahead and I covered the whole thing with another layer of distress collage medium. Once it was dry, I painted the whole thing with picket fence distress paint and then I wiped it off before it was completely dry, leaving the white kind of down in the background but revealing a lot of that leafy twigs detail so that that would kind of stand out in the craft color. To finish it off, I don't know if you noticed this, but on the parts that I cut off, I actually cut away that border part, and then I just put the border right there on the top and on those corners so that it had a uniform border all the way around. And then once the paint was dry, I went around with some walnut stain distress crayon, and I just darkened the edge just the tiny, tiniest amount. Now, once the background is done, that's where you get to start being a little creative. And one of the dies that really kind of inspired this whole 
garden theme was the potted two die. I really love these dies. Now you can do three different types of pots. You can do a terracotta pot. You could do a, like a, a bucket, you know, uh, or you could also do a barrel. So I'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute, but for this project, I wanted to do a terracotta pot that wasn't too distressed or too maybe moldy um, or mossy. Uh, so I cut one out of the new potted, this is the size for the new potted die. This is the original potted die um, that we've all been using. And so I wanted you to see next to each other, the two sizes. Now, when we are, we're putting flowers into the original potted die, it is very kind of short and stubby. And so if, if we weren't careful, the flowers could really overwhelm the pot. And it just looked like we had plants that were just too big for the pot they were planted in. And so that's why the potted two was born. Also, uh, we can use even bigger stems with it than just the the different wildflower stems that we had available. Now, if you were careful, you could fit some of the older wildflower stems in the potted pots. If you were careful and you put them down, you maybe cut off the bottom. That's what I did here. This is from Wildflower Stems 1, and I put these uh, in, and I just cut the bottoms off so that they didn't overwhelm the pot and look like they didn't really belong in there. These stems are from the Chapter 2 release. Uh, Tim had uh, released, um, I believe it was last year, there were some large stems um, and it's a big XL die. So you can cut them out of uh, several pieces of heavy stock or you can cut them out of chipboard, you can cut them out of fabric, all kinds of things. And then he released festive stems which were more um, seasonal last Christmas. And then this is the third in this series. This is uh, the Large Stems 2. And I used the um, lavender flower for this tag, but there's also a type of a daisy flower and another type of daisy uh, that comes on these. All three of these come on the Large Stems 2. So I'll show you those again, like I said, in just a minute. But right now, I did the lavender for this one. Uh, I did wildflower stems for this. And then I just put a little bit of some moss in there to cover it up because I cut these out of chipboard because they're a big sty. So I cut both pots out of chipboard and then I painted them with rusty hinge, which is perfect color for terracotta pots. And you can see, I just very lightly brushed on a little bit of white picket fins paint just to kind of give it that terracotta pot look. And then I rubbed a little bit of peeled paint distress crayon over it when it was completely dry to kind of give it a little bit of a, a mossy kind of look to it. So that's how I made these. And then because they were chipboard, I went ahead and bent them a little bit to give them a little bit of dimension. And I popped up some of the flowers also to give them a little bit of dimension. Now they are sitting, you may have noticed, on some of the et cetera trims that are out of that same thick board that the tag is made out of. But Tim came out with this release with the decorative trims dies that fit all three types of these trims perfectly. All right, so I had a little bit of an interruption there, but let's go ahead and pick it up where I left off. And that was in saying that the decorative trim dies will fit any of the three sizes. And all you have to do is just when you cut the paper, it will be longer than the medium and the small dies or uh, decorative trims. And so all you have to do is just cut the paper off at the ends and they fit perfectly. And then you just adhere them onto the board with some distressed collage medium and you're good to go. Now, this is great for not only this style, but also the scalloped because you don't have to cut all the scallops out and especially that pinked uh, edged uh, trim because that one just impossible to get in all of those little pinked edges and so these dies are absolutely fabulous for that. Now we end with the word garden which is the same uh, I believe this is the bold alpha from the chapter 2 release and I cut the words tea and garden out. These are thinlets uh, but what I did was I cut several layers of cardstock out as well as the top 
layer of the um, colored cardstock. And then when you put them together, several of them, it really makes them stand out from the background and really makes them more prominent. So that's something that I like to do to make a lot of times my words just a little bit more bold. So there you go. This is the kind of inspiration piece that got us started or got me started actually on all the rest of this, uh, the samples for this release. So let's go ahead and talk about those now too. So for my plate decor, I just went to the Dollar Tree and I got a charger. Well, this is actually really a dinner plate. I'm kind of using as a charger for the smaller uh, tea plate. And then they also have napkins and silverware that you can get if you don't have a, a set at home. To make this match, I just painted it with distress paint. It was a clear, it's just a clear plastic. I think they actually call this a cake plate. It has a little foot on it. So I just used distress paint to paint the bottom part of it and then it matched my decor and it doesn't affect um, the ability to eat on the plate. Uh, you wouldn't want to put this through your dishwasher or anything like that, but it should stand up to uh, several uses if you'd like. I tied a little tool around it to hold it all together. And then I wanted something kind of gardeny for decor. And I thought this dragon perspective dragonfly was just perfect for that. So what I did was I cut the dragonfly out of white heavy stock first. And then I adhered it using Distress Collage Medium just on the little parts of uh, around here. So what I did was I put it on my finger and then I patted it on the back side of the die cut. And then I adhered it to some vellum. So you can see that the back here is vellum. And I tried to make sure that it didn't squirt out because the Distress Collage Medium will act as a resist to distress stains and distress inks. And so I didn't want it to squirt out. So that's why I used my finger. I just used a little bit to put all over the back of the butterfly and the paper. And then I adhered it onto the, uh, the vellum. You could also try some of the Sizzix permanent adhesive and put it on the back before you cut it and then adhere it to the vellum and see if that works for you as well. I knew I was gonna be heating it and I wasn't sure if it would cause it to kind of pop up or not. So that's why I went ahead and used the collage medium sparingly. Now, once it was dry, I went ahead and I cut out the vellum just around the edge so that you, it could, you could see through the wings. And then I sprayed it with several colors of distress Distress spray stain. So this uh, started out as bundled sage and then I think I added just a little bit of maybe some forest moss if I remember correctly. Um, but it started out as bundled sage here in the center. I did a little bit of kitsch flamingo and some uh, Victorian velvet I believe and even uh, a little bit of tattered rose in there just to give it some color. And then I kind of felt like it wasn't quite dark enough. I think I tipped it out here with a little bit of uh, the Camp Crackling Campfire just to make it a little darker. Once it was dry, I splattered or I sprayed it with a little bit of mica um, spray. And so you might be able to see some of the sparkle it's probably very difficult to pick up on the camera but there is just a little bit of sparkle all the way across it and then i flicked a little bit of the tarnished brass distress spray stain as well as a little bit of uh ground espresso uh, spray stain i flicked that on there to make all the little dots so that was very simple to do. And then once I had done that, I used the new interchangeable seal impresslet, which cuts out, it can be scalloped, it can be pinked, or it can just be a straight circle. And then it embosses these dots and this inner circle when you run it through the die. And the interchangeable part is whether it's gonna be scalloped, pinked, or a straight circle. So I went with scalloped for my tea. And then to make sure that we could see the details on that seal, I took my tarnished brass distress crayon and I just ran it over those raised areas 
and you can kind of see that it's just gold, a little bit of shiny gold that kind of goes with our um, dragonfly. And then I just finished it off with one of the original large stems, which was just some greenery. Uh, and so if you're getting, or if you have the large stem from the first release of the stems, uh, you will end up with this. And um, this is actually works perfectly with the large stems too that I used for the potted dye uh, place cards that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. And so it's great to have this greenery to go with some of the other flowers. Uh, and then, you know, that pretty much uh, finished off my plate okay, decor. So here's my teacup. And I have my tea spoon, which goes right under the handle when and on the saucer for people to use when they are stirring their tea. But I'm gonna set that aside because it's not attached right now. And I'm gonna hold the teacup this way so that you can see uh, how it works. Now, this is not one of my expensive teacups. This is one that um, I was able to get that um, isn't special to me. So, but I think it's very pretty. And so I went ahead and I glued the, the teacup to the saucer so that it would ship all right. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit of a rim decoration. And so what I used first, we'll talk about this for the rim decoration. This one is the Impresslet Butterfly. And so you can see all the detail of that embossing. And so it embosses and cuts at the same time. So that's very simple to do. All I did was I just took one of my really old um, backgrounds that I had made and I really liked the colors and I thought they went well with everything. And so I just cut the butterfly out of that. Now, uh, you need to make sure that you do have some ink on the back just because it's going to be whoops sitting on the edge of the teacup. So you do want the back to be colored as well. Uh, so go ahead and add a little bit of ink on the back of one of your backgrounds. And then go ahead and run it through. So I ran it through my Impresslet and then I laid it in my splat box and I covered the front and the back with Distress Resist Spray. That's why it's shiny, it's Distress Resist Spray. And then once it was dry, I went over it with that gold, well, the tarnished brass Distress Crayon so that all of the raised areas would show up once, and it would also coordinate with the little bits of gold that are often on the teacups. And then I took my snips and I just cut a little slit right here where the wings kind of go in. So I just cut a little slit and then that allows it to go on the edge of the teacup and sit like that. So I kind of folded it up on both sides of the body and then, and sometimes you have to first use your fingers on both sides of the rim to get it to sit nicely. But that's how that works. And it's just a little bit of a rim decor so that when they come in, it looks a little bit gardeny. And so that's another use for, for some of your butterflies that you might have. And then usually at my teas, in my teapots, I already have tea that has been steeped and strained for people to use, or um, they can use a strainer uh, to strain it out if I leave the loose leaf tea in there. But, um, you know, other people, you know, sometimes they like to choose their own tea, and so they, they prefer tea bags, which is fine. And so I got some tea bags, I tied them with a little bit of tulle, and then I used that seal again. And again, I used an old kind of green background that I had and I cut it with the Impresslet interchangeable seal die. And I used the gold crayon, again, distressed crayon, to bring out the details. And then I used the cafe die. And again, I just cut that base piece out. I didn't use all of the colorized layers on it because I just wanted the shape of the teacup. And that's really all you need sometimes is just the shape. I just tucked it in under there for just a little bit of decor and put it in there for my guests if they would just like their own type of tea. If not, or if I'm serving tea, they can take it home as a tea favor or another little gift that they can use at home.
All right, now let's talk about where are our guests going to sit? Well, you might want your guests to sit in certain spots. You might not care where your guests sit, but you want it to look like a garden. And so I used the potted two die, that taller pot, and it makes a galvanized bucket or a barrel or a terracotta pot for your garden. And so I made all three that will would be put on the table. And if I had more guests, it just takes a few more minutes to make a couple more of these. Now for the flowers, I used the chapter two, large, the large stems to release. It's an, a big XL die. And these are very tall flowers. And again, these would go well if you had the large stems one and you had this greenery piece that you could put in with them as well. They would work too. And then there are two other flowers that are on that release that you could use. Now to make these, and they stand up so that you could put them on your table, you could put your guest's name across here if you want, or you could just put them by their plate just as you know a little pot of flowers that are growing in your garden. To make these, they're just like any other name place cards that I make for the different releases that I've made before. And I just took a piece of cr heavy craft stock and you, I scored it in the middle and then I scored it at a half an inch on each side. I did a mountain, would go like this. I did a mountain fold and then you can see the pieces of the heavy stock go up here. I will eventually, you would eventually glue the tops together, but before you glue the tops together, you want to put whatever you're gonna put on the sides of this. So what I did was I cut out the pot shape from this craft stock, but you don't wanna put it all the way down. If you can see, I put it just inside where that blade would go so that it doesn't cut off that folded part on either side, all right? And then it allows you to stand up whatever shape that you're cutting. I didn't come up with this. This is an old technique, and I think I actually learned it from Tim, uh, who saw someone do it. So this is not my technique, and I don't take credit for it, but I use it all the time to make place cards with my Sizzix dies because I just love doing that. So. As I said, you could put someone's name here if you wanted or their initial, if they had a long name, you could just put initials there or you could just put it by someone's place setting just as a little decoration. Now for these, because they were gonna go on the tea table, I decorated not only the front and I watercolored the stems, but I also did the same on the back. And this is the back side. You can even see where kind of the edges are that you know how dyes make that edge. But I painted, uh, watercolored the back and decorated the back just like I did the front so that if it's sitting on the table, the person that's sitting on the other side is going to see the same thing that the person sitting at that seat is going to see. All right, and so then to finish it off, once you have put the decor piece on both sides of your folded base, then you're gonna go ahead and put the stems in and you will attach the top so that it can stand up. And then I added just that little bit of moss to cover up the front edge, all right? And then here is the galvanized. I used metal um, craft stock and I sanded it just a little bit and added some black paint to go down into those sanded areas to make it look a little bit worn and that's it for the place cards or for the little garden bits that you would put on your table. Now let's talk about some favors. I love to make favors and you know, generally for Halloween or Christmas releases, I love making little favors. But for a tea, it's so fun to send your friends home with just a little something to remember their time together with you. And so I love this Matchbox die. It is a great size. It's not too tiny. And so it's gonna fit some really fun favors uh, in them. And so what I did was I cut the box 
and the cover out of the white, Distress White Heavy Stock. What I did was I used some of the backdrops from the Ideology uh, line and I attached the backdrops paper to the White Heavy Stock before I cut it. This Matchbox die is a Biggs XL and so it will cut through chipboard and everything like that. You don't want to use chipboard for this because you are folding paper in on itself to make these sides of the box. Uh, so you do want, don't want to use anything heavier than cardstock, uh, but it will cut through the backdrop, the, the Sizzix permanent adhesive sheets, and then the heavy stock um, to make the cover. So it will do that. And it, it makes it nice and sturdy. Now, it comes with some circle dies and these the seal dies. Uh, these are thinlets, uh, but the thinlets will cut a circle out of the cover before you put it together if you would like. I didn't choose to do that for this one. I just made the, the box and the cover, and then I added this afterwards because I wanted these to look like little terrariums instead of being able to see down into the box. Now for my boxes, first let me talk about the little favors um, that I put in here. So I went to Cost Plus World Market and I found some mint humbugs that are an English mint. And so I thought that was fun. So I put mint humbugs in some of them and in others I put some mini Ghirardelli chocolates. So those fit really well too. Now these mini ones are tiny. They look like they're about an inch by an inch square. Um, to fit just in there and you can fit two of them perfectly in these little boxes. So I thought that was great. I can't wait to see what other uh, types of candy I can find that will fit in here. You can fit three mint humbugs across uh, in these as well. Now let's talk about the terrarium that I made to go with my garden tea favors. So when you cut the seal, it also cuts an inside circle that fits perfectly within the domes. Uh, that uh, Sizzix sells that go with Tim's like snow globes and things like that, the globe domes. And so what I did was I went ahead and I cut seals out of silver and out of gold metallic craft stock. Then I took the outer seal ring, it's a ring, I set it aside and I attached the circle to the middle of my matchbox. Then I took the mini tattered florals die that Tim did a great demo on. So if you missed that demo a few months ago, you really need to go back on his YouTube channel and find it because he did a great uh, tutorial on how to put these roses together and how to put some of these other flowers together and how to shape the leaves and things like that. So uh, I'll try and put a link to that maybe in the description of this video but I did the roses, the mini tattered roses, and you can see there's some leaves in there. And then I added a little bit of moss and I just adhered those to the center part of that metallic circle that was cut out. Then I adhered the globe dome, but you need to know that there is a big plastic ring on the globe domes because normally they are underneath something when you cut the circle out. And that would be the case with these matchbox dies too, if you cut it out of the cover. But since I didn't, the plastic actually is larger around than the seal. So I had to trim by hand, I had to trim that plastic ring down by about half and then adhere it to the top of the matchbox. And once that was done, I adhered the outer seal ring to the top of the dome and it covered it up so you can't even tell that I trimmed it down. And there we have little terrarium tea favors for our friends to take home with some yummy little treats. All right, and you can use the different flowers. And I just thought that was a fun treat to make with the matchboxes. Last but not least, I know, more favors. I couldn't help myself. But, you know, we all love those 3D embossing folders 
that do such amazingly detailed leveled embossing. And so some of our favorites have been the botanical and the roses, and now we have them in the size of the uh, trading cards, um, the ATC trading cards. And so we have the little mini folder. So we have the mini botanical and we have the mini roses. How amazing is that? And so I just love them. And what I thought I would do once I got them kind of embossed on the white heavy stock, I thought, oh, you know, I think I'll watercolor them. So I watercolored them. I had a good time doing that. And then I was thinking, hmm, I could make little tiny cards or I could make more favors, yes. And so I always vote for more favors. So all I did was I cut a second piece of white heavy stock the same size and I just sewed around three sides and then I took a one inch circle punch and I punched through both sides so that I had a little place where I could grab whatever I put into this little folder and I happened to put some small little chocolate bars that I found at Cost Plus World Market and they fit perfectly right inside there and then the little finger things allow you to pull the chocolate right out. So you could do chocolate, you could do tea bags for your friends, you could do gift cards. Um, I don't know that I would do gift cards for a tea but if you were giving um, something to your friends um, for a birthday or something like that these would also fit gift cards. So there are just many things that you can do with them, but I decided, again, because I like favors, to do favors. But I also wanted to show you that they do make beautiful little cards. So this is the botanical, and what I did was I just embossed it and I went over it with my gold, the same gold distress crayon or tarnished brass distress crayon. Um, that I was using for these uh, interchangeable seal impresslets. And so I did the same thing on this mini botanical impresslet, or not impresslet, um, sorry, the uh, embossing folder. And then I just added really quick a little bit of the label stickers from Ideology. This is a backdrop paper from Ideology that I used on the tag here. And also one of the butterfly adornments from the ideology line with a little bit of a gold mat underneath and then the black card stuck for the card. You could use these for invitations if you wanted, thank you notes, anything like that. So I just thought I'd show you that it can be, it can be used for a cute little card as well as maybe making a little folder. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this tour through my Tim Holtz Sizzix Chapter 3 release samples. Uh, everything from our Tea in the Garden welcoming tag to the place cards and the many favors that we can give to our friends as well as even a little mini card we can give them to our table setting decor and even the teacup decor with a little bit of a uh, an additional favor if you if you would. And so uh, I hope that you enjoyed all the different things that you can do with some of these uh, dyes that were in this release to have a wonderful tea in the garden for you and some friends. <laughs>